All righty. Uh, so I'm here in southern New Jersey. I'm, I'm at my house, my home here uh, inland. Um, and uh, I'm in uh, Cannon County, New Jersey. And this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and it's just, it's just an unfishable weekend. And, you know, raining, it's blowing, it's a mess. So I'm Jones, and I'm like, so what do you do? You know, I want to try and keep pumping out some videos here, something decent. So I'm like, all right, what, what do I do? Like, you know what? I figured a lot of people ask me, hey, Bob, like, what are you using? What are you, uh, what kind of gear? Um, what are your techniques? And again, I am nobody that is sponsored by anybody. I am nobody that is setting the world on fire and, and coming up with any in these groundbreaking ways and methodologies of doing things. I'm a listener. Um, I've been fishing since I was, God, uh, probably 15 years old. I'm 50, you know, between riding a moped to Grenlock Lake in Washington Township to go fish for uh, sunfish and bass and pickerel and whatever would bite to obviously, you know, progressing on and fishing uh, down the shore. So um, I'm going to kind of go step by step quickly, but um, show you and tell you what I do, what I use. And you're going to see a lot of this is going to be, you know, if, if, if you watched certain somebody's videos, I know I always refer to them and I'm always, you know, um, I pay homage to those that deserve uh, to have it paid. Um, I got back in the water in 2014. I bought a 2011 Sea Fox, um, 25 foot uh, walk around with twin 150 Yamahas. And I'm like, I've been out of the water for several years, you know, divorce and life and all that. And, you know, got rid of my old boat and whatnot. And I was always a squid and mini fisherman, plain and simple, you know, out the rigs and wrecks and whatnot. Um, and reefs rather so in 2014 i'm looking on youtube i'm like yeah let me look up some flounder fishing and of course i come across skinner john skinner so i will pay homage to that guy on every video and people are you know you like it don't like it, it you know when somebody is doing something and has dedicated their life to making your life better dedicating their time and their efforts to making this sport better and making your day on the water better you know personally that's like the guys that i got high when i got hired at the police department we still had vietnam vets on the force uh and those guys you know they, they taught you the ways they taught you respect they kept you in line and you paid homage to them well i feel the same way when it comes to, to john skinner like i've caught more fish than i've ever caught in my adult life uh, in salt water by using this guy's techniques. And another guy that I, I have to pay homage to is one of my very dear and closest friends. It's Captain Jerry Lynch. Fishes out of Avalon, New Jersey. Um, he, uh, he has a six-pack charter license, diamond jig charters. Also has a uh, bird hunting farm, and he also trains trains bird dogs, shore winds, uh, shore winds hunting farms out of uh, Millville, New Jersey. So you know, you pay attention when you see people that know what they're doing and time and time again are producing, you pay attention, you pay homage. All right, let's move on. So you're going to see a lot of this. I'm going to show you some stuff and you're going to be like, yeah, that's Skinner. Yeah, that's Skinner. And yes, make no mistake, it's Skinner. And then I put my own little twist on things. So first and foremost, uh, what rig am I using? Well, you could simply call it the Skinner rig. Okay, so I'm using, uh, over the years, I've changed my leader material, and I'm trying to go as light now as possible. Some stuff is pretty brittle and tough to tie some knots, and I just think it's a little thicker, and, and sometimes I don't think your presentation is as fluid when you're jigging, because I'm nonstop. You watch, I'm nonstop jigging. Uh, I try to be nonstop jigging anyway, but so I start, I used to use 20-pound Power Pro, and you start to realize, like, where am I fishing? You know, I'm not out in the reefs anymore. I'm, I'm in the back bays of southern New Jersey. And what do I need 20-pound Power Pro for? So let's go a little thinner. So, uh, but I'm using Power Pro nonetheless, okay? Uh, you're, I'm covering this because it's not what I normally use. Uh, it's a little heavier, and it's for some of my other, uh, other uh, rigs. But I'm using, right now, I'm switching everything over as best I can to 15-pound Power Pro. Okay, and I find that it's a little, it's a lot thinner in diameter. It's, it's, it's not scoping. I'm not scoping out as much as, as uh, I used to with the 20 pound Power Pro. And mind you, it's super thin in diameter, but 15 pound Power Pro. I have a buddy 
when I mentioned, Captain Jerry Lynch, has a 15-pound, 13-ounce flounder that he caught in the paper, known for throughout you know the, the South Jersey area. I've seen them. The mount is amazing, and it would have been a 16-pound flounder had it not spit up three uh, three crabs. He landed that on eight-pound mono. That's what this guy fishes, eight-pound mono. Skill? Skills to pay the bills, right? So what the hell do I need 20-pound Power Pro for? I don't, you know? So I'm going down. I'm moving down. I love Power Pro. Um, let's knock things down to 15 pound. So I was using Seaguar uh, or some of these other, other um, fluorocarbon leaders, and I was using some that seemed a little more uh, flexible, which I, I thought I just, you know, aided in my presentation. However, they're expensive. You know, you get the the, the reel, right, that round uh, spool, so to speak, of um, cigar or whatnot and any other fluorocarbon. They're expensive. So this is what I'm using. Let's see if I can bring it up to you guys a little bit here. That works. Awesome. I am using cigar Red Label, 100% fluorocarbon, 20 pound. And this is a big spool. Like... Look at this. It's basically, it's almost fishing line. Like you could, you could put this on your rod or your reel and use this for fishing line. Um, I'm using it for my leader material. And is it as, it's nowhere near as brittle, super flexible. I really believe that as I'm jigging the presentation on my, uh, my, my jig, it's so much, so much more um, free. I guess the worst, the, the word I'm looking for. So that's where I'm at with that. Now, um, I've lightened my drag a little bit because, you know, I am using a little, little lighter, uh, lighter line, lighter braid, a little uh, lighter uh, leader material, but that's why we have our rods and reels, and that's why we have our drags, right? So... I uh, just, in fact, I'll show you this real fast. This is the Quantum Energy S3. These 50-year-old eyes are killing me. Uh, with a flip and switch. So you can switch this from either, you know, hit the, the thumb brake here, the release, and it goes full release. Or if I'm out there jigging, I just give it a little click. It'll let pay out whatever I need to pay out. If I move in from 5 foot to, say, 7 foot and, and, and so on, lays out a little bit extra line, and I can just keep on jigging. I'm not, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's one hand, one-handed. So, but this, yeah, this is Quantum Energy S3, and small reel, but I'm in the back base. So, you know, it's perfect. Uh, let's see what we got here. So, I talk about, if you look at any of my other, other uh videos you'll see i'm i'm always talking about again john skinner and skinner's rigs and i'm also talking about uh the tsunami ball jig right with a swing hook so you can see i'll bring this a little closer to you and guys i keep looking over to the side here because i'm trying to make sure in the viewmaster i have my phone up so making sure that you guys are getting a good good eyeball here so there you are that's our presentation that's the tsunami one ounce a uh, ball jig, fluke ball, in glow, okay? However, this is not the hook that it came with. Uh, this here is a Gamagatsu. Gamagatsu, uh, bait holder hook. I either do 3-0 or 4-0, uh, and you'll see they only come in six, and I just try to, you know, so I don't have so much junk in my, uh, my go bag, you know, my gear bag. I put a couple, you know, packets of hooks in one packet. But what I did was I opened up the eyelet on the uh, the smaller hook that came with this rig. It just got the shaft was too short for uh, for for gulp. In my opinion, in my opinion, I'm not you know listen tsunami tsunami. I'm just Bob Stavola. So, uh, but it just what works for me. So I modified this a little bit, and um, so now you know I'm using a bait holder hook, a little longer shaft, actually a lot longer shaft. It's got your little bait holder barbs up there. Perfect when you're using uh, when you're using gulp, especially four to five inch gulp. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm basically to get this on here. I am opening up the eye on this hook and then closing it. It's kind of a compromise. I might be compromising the integrity of the eye of this hook, 
And so what I did now, I went out and bought uh, some, some split rings, okay, and I forgot to bring them out of the garage, but I bought real tiny split rings. However, you got to watch the tensile strength on them and make sure you're getting stuff that's, that's strong, that's strong enough. And then I wound up getting these, uh, these pliers. But if you look real close, I'll give you a white background here. Let me see if I can help you out so you can see them a little better. White background. If you look right here, you'll see, you'll see that, uh, see that? Looks like an egg tooth, right? Looks like an egg tooth on an alligator, um, or it looks like a tooth on a uh, weak fish. That there, these are four split rings, and that there is to open the split ring up, so you can uh, you can add what you need to add to the split ring itself. So now, between the barrel swivel on this tsunami ball jig and the eye on the bait holder hook, I'm putting split rings in there, and they're like 40 pound tensile strength. So they're not. I already I had one on one of my original videos. I had one open up on a decent flounder, and like you see me go bye bye, and sure enough, the flounder left with hook in mouth, and uh, I got stuck with with just the ball jig and the uh, the barrel swivel. So here we go. Here's my leader. Okay, I got a dropper loop down here or a loop down here, and I just do basically a hand over hand surgeon loop. You know, um, this way if I do I do need to switch up real fast, I can pop this off real quick. And then put it put something new on. I come up anywhere from there about 12, 16, 18 inches and put in a dropper loop. Sometimes I'll just do again the overhand loop because I mess up those dropper loops all the time. And when I go to pull them tight, apparently I put them through the wrong way and they they pull pull out. And another Gamagatsu uh, bait holder hook. All right. Now it's tough to see. You're not going to be able to see it. But my terminal tackle when I when I go, uh, I don't use barrel swivels. I try to stay away from as much terminal tackle as possible. That there to connect the braid and the um, leader is just a uni to uni knot. And I've never had any failure with them. I've had great success. I know some people are very nervous about doing that. Me personally, I uh, I like to use them. So that's what works for Bobby. You know, works for Bob Stavola. So cigar. Red Label, 15 pound Power Pro, Gamagatsu 3.0 or 4.0 hooks, Tsunami Swing Hook Ball Jig. Uh, every now and then, if I uh, if I want to, what I'll do is I get custom made uh, ball jigs. You know, I, I'm, I've gotten away from using bucktails for flounder. I just have better success uh, with um, ball jigs, and I get them custom made. But you could find these at any decent tackle shop. Uh, you'll find them, you know, long hook, long enough shank. You'll see his, this guy here puts these holders on here so my my gulp doesn't come flying off, stays tight, and uh, I'm good to go. I tell you right now, I don't have the skill set and the touch that other guys uh, do, like my buddy uh, Captain Jerry Lynch. These guys, if they can go eighth of an ounce, they would go eighth of an ounce in nine, 10, 12 foot of water. And some guys, they they go so light, but they could still touch. They still feel. And their ratio of, of catching fish is going to be way up. I'm a one ounce guy. It just works best for me. But I'll tell you, the lighter uh, jig head you can go, the lighter weight, if you can do it, do it. Um, I'm just kind of being a bonehead about it. I stay at one ounce. That's the lightest I go. And it works. So... Let's see what else we got going on here on my list. Uh, Unity Uni, the hook, Seaguar, lighter braid. Did I mention John Skinner? Just making sure. Um, tides. Personally, what I like to do, especially if you want to get back in the sounds, I love to fish that last hour of the incoming tide. Now, they kind of say, you know, you got that hour of just dead tide. What I'll do is because I have a Minn Kota on the on the bow of my Carolina skiff, if that tide was still coming in, well, then I'll just keep, I'll keep drifting in with the tide. And once I think that tide starts to change, and where the tide changes, it change on the top of the water or the bottom of the water first? It's usually in the bottom of the, uh, the water column. So that tide will start running back out. Now, again, we got to play with the winds and all that nonsense. But if the, when I start to see that I'm starting to scope a little bit, if I was still coming in, meanwhile, now my, my, Jig head is starting to go the opposite way a little more than it was. I'm not straight up and down. That tells me the tide is already starting to move out. I turn the boat around with that Minn Kota, and if I got to fight the wind, I got to fight the wind. That's why I have you know the, the trolling motor on the bow of the boat, and I follow the tide. The fish are waiting there. They're waiting for like you and me. They're sitting there waiting. 
and waiting. I wait. Where do you wait at your? Do you wait at your front door or your back door when you order a pizza? I wait at my front door because that's where the guy's coming. He's gonna knock on my door. You know, pizza man. <laughs> I'm waiting. It's coming. That pizza's coming at me. I'm not waiting at my back door wondering. Huh? Oh, shit. I hope a pizza comes by. You know. So same thing. Follow the tide. Follow the tide. Follow the tide. If you have a trolling motor, you can do it. You know, you can do it. Um, I had a couple fish that were, uh, had some mud on the bottom of them. So, and I forget the guy's name and it's, it's killing me. And he used to have, uh, shows up here every Thursday. He's out of Wildwood, New Jersey. Uh, he's a veteran and I'm so disgusted with myself. I can't remember his name. Um, but he would, uh, he would have shows on here and this guy, another guy would always try to teach us something on his shows, right? He's old salt and he's an old school guy. And and Fred is sticking in my name in my head, but I I'm, I don't know I don't think I'm right. But anyway, talk about mud on the fish back in the grassy sound. He would fish all the time. You know, if those fish you pull those fish up and they got muddy bottoms, you'll saw, see it on one of my videos if you go back and look. That means them fish are just kind. Of, first and foremost, it tells you where the fish are. They're up shallow. They're in the muddy flats. Okay, they're waiting on that warm water. They're waiting on that outcoming tide, okay? They're waiting for that tide to come rushing out, to come rushing out with all that warm water now, especially when you have like a 10, 9, 10, 11 o'clock high tide. And now there's some time where that sun is heating that water up in those back, uh, those back flats. And those fish are waiting. They're hanging there. They're also lazy because they're stuck in the mud. They're just sitting there and waiting for the bait to come by, and then they're ambushing it. Um, but that tells you also where, you know, where they're at. So uh, they're not sitting in a sandy bottom. They're up in the mud. And I've had a couple good fish that were muddy bottoms. Uh, so uh, follow the tide, right? Keep moving with the tide. Speed, people talk, what speed, what speed? If I can hang around 0 0.07 to 1.0 miles per hour, to me, that I, I feel ideal. If you get a little above 0.1, or uh, one mile an hour, 1.1, 1.2. 1.2 is about as the fast I, the fastest I'd want to go. And again, I control all that with my uh, my Minn Kota, my trolling motor, um, on the front of the, uh, the the bow of the boat. So tides up, outgoing, top of the outgoing tide. I love the last hour of incoming tide. I love that first swing of the uh, the outgoing. And I'll tell you, I love the bottom, uh, the last hour of incoming, uh, or I'm sorry, outgoing, the last hour of the outgoing tide. I love. I found through paying attention to what I'm doing, to what others are doing, to what I'm catching and when I'm catching, them big fish are lazy. Them big fish, they're not going to run around. How many times are we catching little, we call them potato chips, them little little palm-sized flounder, and they're, they're running around and running around and running around. You're never getting getting those big fish. Those big fish, they're waiting. They're waiting. They're lazy, you know. They're just waiting. Tide's starting to slow down. Now, something comes by. Boom, I don't have to work as hard to go get my meal, right? Pizza guy comes. I don't run out and meet him in the street. I'm lazy. I'm standing at the front door waiting for this dude to bring my pizza, right, Timmy? Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Mind you. Take care, you know? So, think about that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Don't let up. Oh, my goodness. If you look at some of my videos... I hope you're watching my videos and I hope you're subscribing and I hope you're hitting like and I hope you're hitting that little bell and I hope you love your family. So uh, if you're watching some of my videos, how many times that I'm like, I get the flounder, flounders up and it's like, whoop, hook falls out or the hook just pops right out. Whew. And you'll hear me say it. Don't let up. Do not let up. Don't let up slack. You know, you watch all these other fishing videos. This, these aren't bass. We're not reeling back, you know, or pulling back, reeling down. Pull, we're just keeping a steady bend, and we're just keeping pressure on that fish. Pressure on that fish. Every now and then, I'll, you know, you're going to lift them, but, man, you better be on that real quick. You do not want a half a millisecond of slack in that line. And there's a couple of fish that you've seen, and that's exactly what happened. Um, if I would have let up, they were gone. They were out of there. Sometimes early season, if I'm out preseason, I'll leave the fish in the water for a little bit with his head out of the water because we all know you don't leave their take their head out of the water if you're trying to net them. But if you want to get them to kind of shake themselves off, don't take them out of the water. Bring their head out of the water, okay? And sometimes they'll shake it off. It's actually uh, it's in our New Jersey um, New Jersey uh, wildlife fish and wildlife. It's one of their suggestions they actually give so you can uh, release fish and uh, not not even touch them. So think about that too. 
What else? What else? Don't let up. Mud. Paying homage. Paying homage. Paying homage. Paying homage. Yep. Skinner. 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 John Halkis, another great guy. Please go on. Watch John Skinner fishing. Watch jigging jerks. Um, who else do I talk about? Elias V. Awesome. Dude's awesome. Um, let's think here. Romo fishing. These guys are all in kayaks. Incredible. Um, just listen, watch and listen, and uh, see money, Fishaholic, I keep forgetting to mention that guy, such a great dude, watch Fishaholic, uh, watch B-Stav, Bob Stavol, watch B-Stav's fishing videos, you know, um, I think we're good, I think that's it, Spotlock, oh, I want to talk about, we'll end on how poorly I was netting fish the other day, so I'm in, in the boat by myself, and I have to stop doing this, I got a pretty, you know, good tide going, I'm running, and in order not to, one, waste the rest of the drift, and two, focus so much on catching that fish that I get myself in trouble, I'm not watching which way I'm, I'm drifting, I hit the boat, I hit the uh, remote on this domain code, and I keep it in spot lock. And I'm telling you, it holds you dead on the dime, right? You drop a dime, you ever hear people drop a dime? You drop a dime, the boat holds you right there, the Minn Kota holds you right there. The problem with that is, now, I'm not moving with the current. I'm fighting that current. That current, that current was tuning me up the other day. And I was having a hard time netting the fish to the point where I'm like, I got even, I was like, it was almost comical. Had I lost that 23 inch flounder, it wouldn't have been that comical. I would have felt like a total imbecile. But you see me, I was even coming up on the tail of the fish, the tail of the flounder. You're not catching flounder. You're not going to net flounder from the tail. I, like it, it was, uh, I, what I was doing was I'm like, I can't get around. I can't turn this fish. I'm fighting the, I'm fighting the, you know, because I'm now I'm anchored, so to speak, virtually anchored. I'm fighting the current. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just let the fish drift back into that, into the net. Yeah, okay. As soon as that fish realized his tail touched that net, where was he? He was gone, and I finally maneuvered around and got him netted. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to be doing spot lock anymore. I think when I'm, uh, I'm fighting a fish, I'm definitely going to be uh, just letting the drift go. And, you know, got to pay attention. It's, it is what it is. And uh, worst case scenario, if I, I run into something that's uh, a little too shallow, that's why uh, that's why I've got towboat insurance. So uh, I'll get myself out of there. So, guys, I hope some of what I just said, I hope it helps. I sincerely do. That's why I'm doing this, you know. Um, and especially on a day like today, I can't get out. I can't make a fishing video. I can't produce a fishing, fishing video. So why not show you what I'm doing, what works, uh, rod choice, I like something that's kind of, uh, actually stiff. I like a stiffer rod with a faster action tip, uh, because I am non-stop. You watch, non-stop jigging, non-stop jigging. Uh, pretty synonymous of the godfather of flounder, John Skinner. So I'll leave you with this, though. We are, uh, it is Memorial Day weekend. And, uh, listen, while everybody's out there making fools out of himself on Facebook and dancing and drinking and partying and all that on this, this Memorial Day weekend. Don't please don't lose sight of why we're doing what we're doing. I used to be the commander of our honor guard. This weekend always meant something to me. Memorial Day Monday always meant something to me. I spent the day with our veterans, our VFW guys, our uh, posts, our uh, American Legion posts, and we would go throughout our township uh, with our, all our honor guards and we would pay respect to all our uh, memorial sites. Um, yeah, take a minute and just be quiet, be silent, you know, step away from the madness and realize that we live in the land of the free because of the brave and those brave men and women that have fought for our right to be who we are uh, and to be as free as we are and to be Americans and, uh, you know, who never came home to their families, never had the chance to start a family. You know, you look at, uh, man, listen, you look at... Uh, videos and, and whatnot and you know um storming the beaches in normandy and whatnot world war ii i mean what a bloodbath i mean those were kids coming off of those boats uh so please remember the fallen pay respect um pay homage to those that came before us those that fell please support your police officers uh please support your firefighters uh your emts and the people behind the scenes, the girls and guys behind the scenes, uh, your dispatchers, telecommunicators. So um, thank you. This is 24 minutes. I can't believe I talked this long. Um, <laughs> must be an Italian thing, huh? So hit like, please subscribe, spread the word, cut and paste, and uh, forward these videos to your buddies and uh, if you like them. 
and um, drop a comment. Let me know, you know, am I helping you? Is there something you'd like to add? I'm never going to stop learning. I always want to catch more fish. And um, let's, uh, let's just make this sport and just keep making this sport better. So with that, God bless America. Thank you. Uh, a couple things I kind of forgot that would probably be important. Uh, gulp. I use gulp all the time. I'm always using gulp. Four inch, five inch swimming mullets. Um, I like anything that glows, anything that's going to really show up down the bottom. Um, I really like and had a lot of success last year and so far this year with the four inch pink shine grub. I've been using that on the uh, on the swing hook, uh, on that tsunami ball jig, flute ball jig with the swing hook. And the other thing I forgot, and I apologize, is where do I get my stuff? Um, flat out, easy, I am a huge Amazon guy. Always going to Amazon, always shopping on Amazon. Like I talked about the pizza, right? I like to stand at my front door and let stuff come to me. So I go to Amazon. Um... Another couple, you know, some big box stores that I, I'll go to uh, when they have Gulp on sale. Um, but Amazon, okay? Um, I'll see if I can uh, cut and paste and drop all the links down, uh, down below. All right, again, thanks for watching. Hit like if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, spread the word, tell a friend, and uh, God bless America. Thanks, guys.